Welcome to the session. In this session, I'm going to show you or explain you some of the Oracle DBA frequently asked questions, interview question and answers. In our uh, previous videos, I have posted like two parts and uh, one or two mock interviews also I posted in my blog and also in my YouTube channel, Racks Infotech. If you are uh, first time you are uh, viewing this interview questions, go through our old videos in Racks Infotech channel. Okay, let us get started. I used to like uh, prepare some of the questions on topic wise. First topic is database administration, like architecture level basic user management architecture level questions okay first one is how do you create a new user in oracle or else in different way also they will ask how to create a oracle database user or how to create a user in oracle for that simple it's very simple one if you are new to this it is a bit difficult right so for that we can use create user username identified by the password Without this identified uh, by the password one, we can create the users. Those will not the authenticated or otherized users. Okay, if you are providing identified by the password, it is a protected one. So security, if somebody is trying to connect to the database without authenticate uh, the password, validate the password, valid password or credentials, user cannot connect to the database. That's where we used to mention for each and every database user, we have to have provide the identified by the key and then password. Also, we used to create a different way. Uh, we can define the default table space and the quota of the table space and the profiles, everything we can uh, mention as part of that user creation script. But it is uh, depends on the environment to environment. But if you are going to use this general uh, statement, it will create you the user and it will assign all the default values, default profile, default table space, default temp table space, those will automatically assign. Okay. In this way, we are going to create a user. And the next question is explain the differences between archive log and no archive log mode. First of all, why we need to put this archive log? Why we need to enable it? So interviewers, they used to ask you whether you have an idea on this part or not. Okay. Archive log mode, why we need to enable if you are if you want to use RMAN backup uh, strategies or backup tool, your database must and should be in archive log mode. Otherwise, your RMAN prompt or RMAN tool will not work out. Okay. But there are some um, advantages and disadvantages also there. If you are putting archive log mode, it is very, very useful for you to take the online backups and recoveries. Those will uh, useful cases. But the performance wise, it is going to degrade it. Why? Because we need extra storage and the performance is required. Uh, performance like a, a memory, extra memory is going to use for these backups and storing these archive logs. Okay. In no archive log mode, the RMAN will not work. If you are using cold backup, hard backups, or export and import additional backups, your database in no archive log mode. So that is only one difference. Performance will be improved, but in case of restore and recoveries and online backups, this will not support it. That is one thing. These two are the differences. If you want to enable your archive log mode, disable the archive log mode, that is different question, but your DB should be in mount. You should not change this archive mode, no archive mode in when the database is open. Okay, next one is, what is database? Simple question, right? Any, any interviewer, if you want to check whether you are aware of the database definition, as, especially for the freshers, they will ask uh, this kind of questions. For experience, I don't think so, but you may expect anything, any kind of questions as part of that interview. There is no specific questions for experience or there is no questions for uh, freshness, right? So, but yeah, we used to ask the questions according to that position, according to that requirement. But interviewers, mostly we are not going to follow the process. They used to ask if you are, and another thing is also there, they, want, they don't want to stick with the JD, job description. Did they want to check whether you are export, I mean, uh, experienced on those topics or not? Just they want to check it. If you are having more uh, knowledge on the database topics, apart from what they are looking, 
that is also an extra thing benefited for them and uh, as well right just they want to check it but if you are not answering for each and every question to select it that is not a matter okay to select the interview how you are going to crack the interview that is different scenario we'll talk about in the different thing what is oracle database it is like uh, information related information stored in a specific place that place we call it as a database but oracle database is organized or uh, maintained by using rdbma software relational database management software it is this software has been developed by the oracle corporation this this oracle corporation is the owner of this oracle databases it's used by throughout the globe like number one database in the globe most of the vendors using this database we have n number of databases in the market but it is the highest market uh, supporting our uh, do I mean acquired this database software and they are using more than 70 to 80 percent of the market through I mean throughout the globe okay explain the architecture of the database it's it depends on how you are going to understand the architecture and how you are going to explain if you want to explain each and every component inside of this architecture at least one to two hours you required but in interviewer they used to ask you all the high level steps high level means you can go ahead and explain the architecture in uh, two parts that is fine database portion and instance portion instance is nothing but the memory and background processes the combination of memory and background process we call it as an instance it is one of the architecture component and the database it's a collective I mean collection of the physical files and that like all the crd files we call it as a crd files is the physical files we can able to view it when the database is up or down but this instance related information when the database is up and running then only we can see it if the database is down we cannot able to see all the instance related information memory or uh, background processes or logical files but database files are physical files so architecture we can divide it into two parts logical and physical files okay inside of your database you used to have other thing is also table spaces data files and table space both are same but the difference or de uh, definition of the table space is logical storage we cannot able to see it physically but data files are the physical files okay physical the crd files we call it as a physical files but table space is the logical portion within your database actual data where it is going to store in the database is a table space okay that 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 way you have to explain the architecture I mean no need to go for each and every background process and all if they will ask you one more cross question then you can answer it this is high level architecture of the database the next question explain the role of redo log okay redo log is uh, one of the important component in your sga okay redo log buffer redo log file is your data uh, database uh, it's a physical file redo log buffer is the logical one it is in our memory but here they asked you clearly for redo log it is a physical file what is the importance of this redo log file redo log file collects all the current transactions which are coming to your database that too those are there in your uh, redo log buffer let me take this so whatever if we can calculate it, this sga we divide it into three parts shared pool dbbc database buffer cache and redo log buffer cache so whatever the transactions is coming to in your database first it it should touch your sga sga is placed in your plus bg right this portion we call it as instance we can name it as an sid Oracle SID is your instance name and this is DB name, database name. This is logical one, logical memory. It is a physical, not the memory, logical storage, physical storage, physical, okay, all CRD files, CRD files. So this question is related to this one, redo log. Whatever the information coming to outside system in your database, this is completely, we call it as database server. Okay, this portion so whatever the information is coming to your uh, database server first it is going to your sga portion it is reaching to your redo log buffer cache 
from here, one of the background LG WR will write all the information, current transaction information into your Redu log files. If this file is not having sufficient storage, so that is fine, but uh, used to get uh, this one, keep on logs which happen, performance will be degraded. That's where we redo log files are very crucial to improve our database performance. We need to maintain proper redo log size as well. It required minimum two groups. Each group is having two members or three redo log groups you can maintain. Like if this group is filled, current transactions which are coming to here, it is going to write it here. Once this group is filled, logs which will occur here and the current transactions will write it here. Once this is also filled, logs which occur here, and this is going to fill. And then once it is filled, it is going to this read log group. Similarly, it is going to keep on um, overwriting the existing data. While it is going to overwriting the this data, we need to take a backup. Okay, that is different scenario. Why we need this question related information? Redo logs. What are all the changes made? Okay, what are all the changes made into your database? Those changes are current transactions coming into your redo log buffer. Even though if update commands is happened, right, that the buffers related change also, it will reach to your redo log buffer. From here, it is going to write in your redo log files. Redo log files are helpful for the database restore and recovery purpose. Any instance failures, recovery plays a crucial role in your database recovery. If database is failed, where we are getting the current transaction information from these redo log files. If this redo log files is not uh, have not having the data, if redo log file size is very less, uh, last five hours uh, data you required, then it is an issue. That's where we need to maintain proper uh, storage. That is a different scenario. But these redo log files are useful for your database recovery purpose. If any database is failed, if in any case, in any case database is failed, these redo log files are crucial role, place in a crucial role. Without these redo log files, we cannot able to restore our database. So data integrity and recoverability. Consistent data if you want, uh, and also if you want to recover the database, these redo log files or log files will play a crucial role. That's where we require the redo log file. And the second topic, performance tuning related questions. Okay. Performance related questions, if somebody will ask you, how do you um, identify and resolve the performance bottlenecks in Oracle database? Or some simply they will ask you how you can identify the bottlenecks or performance degraded information, how you are going to sort out, how you are fine and how you are going to sort out. For that also, we have huge topic, like we have different, different options to identify the issues and then uh, troubleshoot it. To, uh, give the answer for this question. You can give this by using V$ or SQL or SQL plan related information. First, we need to check the session ID, which session is uh, running on the database. Then take the SQLs. What are all the SQLs running on uh, the database? Then from that SQL, this view, we can identify the query and SQL IDs also. By using that, which plan it is going to execute, each SQL is, uh, which plan is going to take that SQL. Based upon the plan, we can take a decision whether it is a good plan or bad plan. So if you want to add, uh, optimize the query, need to change the queries, we can suggest to the developers, please uh, look into this query and then we can improve the performance. Or we can suggest them it is taking full table scan. Then we can ask them to create an index on this uh, specific column or any one of the rows uh, table or related to that object. And then uh, the query will be improved, performance will be improved. And memory, if index is there, query is also good, but still it is going to delay or it is uh, degrading our uh, database performances. Look into our memory, like SGA, how much size we are going to provide. So memory utilization on the server level and uh, database server level, both completely we need to look into it. And IO, how much IO is generated during that uh, bottleneck, like, performance issues. In that way also, we need to look into this IO operations also, whether we need to improve anything or we need to ask user to submit or wait some time to submit. So, so many things will be there. These are all the basic things. We can use OEM tool also to identify all these performance bottlenecks or manually also we can use to generate a WR report and identify that uh, report, all the SQLs. 
and then we can take a decision. So you can answer the query uh, to this one. How you can identify? I can identify by using OEM tool. I log into this OEM tool. There I can go ahead and do the performance views. Uh, these are all the views. Okay. Uh, these views we can dynamically uh, query in our uh, SQL prompt or else in OEF level we can go to the target select the database and there we can select the monitor under monitors you can select the database performance one there you can see it CPU, IO, memory everything it will show you in GUI format all the graphs will, will be shown in OEM level and then you can take a uh, decision how we are going to what kind of issue it is how we are going to fix it is a full table scan or that you can suggest for index if the query is itself it is taking internally looping is there some extra hints will be there so we can ask them to uh, improve this sql query so all these informations we can say for this i mean as an answer for this question okay what is the purpose of the oracle index how does it improve the query performance simply just before we uh, discussed about the adding the indexes it will improve the performance right unnecessary indexes will cause the performance also okay unnecessary indexes some small small queries will be there no need to create for the small queries for uh, indexes and all unnecessarily so oracle generally index will help to improve the performance in the database but the same thing uh, one we have one normal generic query right if you eat sufficient that is good for your health if you eat more than uh, what your body is required if you eat more than that then it is harm to your body right similar way oracle index will help to improve the performance but unnecessary indexes will cause the problems so oracle index will uh, is the database object one of the object index is one of the object it will improve the speed of the data retrieval like if you created an index on a table, specific table, on a table level, if somebody is trying to query the, the information from the table, they will refer this index. And uh, this if you have that index, that in output, whatever the requested output, it will fetch it easily. It won't go for complete table scan. It will go to specific location or column or rows level and it will fetch that information. So speed of of the data retrieval operation on a table, additional cost, like if it is going for one terabyte table space, one TB table space is there. If you want to read only one GB data out of this one terabyte, if you don't have this index on this table, table space, it will read whatever the query you are going to give it, it will read entire one terabyte uh, information. So to re read this information, I waste and storage to locally it needs to be storage and the performance decreases. everything will happen if you create the index for 1 gb data related information it will exactly read this 1 gb or it could be our 2 to 3 gb it will read and it will sort it out the uh, requested information and it will share that output back so instead of going through full table scan it will go to directly to that index location and fetch that related information it will save the database performance as well as the time also. And the cost of additional storage and decreasing the performance, all these things, performance will improve if you have a Oracle index. And simple example, generic example, you have 500 pages book, okay? If you don't have an index in the related to 500 pages in first one or two pages, okay? If you want to identify specific information out of 500 uh, pages of the book. So it is very difficult to you to go through each and every page and get that required information from that book. If you have a, that book index in the first page or second page of that book, you can directly go to that index and read which options or which information you need. Go to directly to that page and read it. It's very quick, right? Exactly same solution applied are the same information we call it as this oracle index also whatever the information you required on the table space create an index on that space table space and read that information as and when you required it will improve the performance a lot okay that's where we require the oracle index you can go through this theoretical part i posted in my blog as well i'll show you that where my blog it is 
Yeah, here it is. Anjani apps DBA blog. Here also I posted recently. Go to 2023 one and December post. You can check it. These questions I have posted. You can read that from this theoretically as well. Or else you can go to this YouTube uh, and uh, explanation will not be there in your blog, right? That's where I'm going to uh, post this on my uh, YouTube channel, Racks Infotech. Okay. Next concepts, backup and recovery. From the backup and recovery, why I mentioned, uh, especially for one or two questions for backup and recovery, one or two questions for this one, right? Interviewer will ask topic wise whether you have how much commanding in backup and recovery, how much commanding you are having on performance tuning, basics, architecture level, security level, in that way. Okay, they won't ask you all the questions in architecture. Okay. In backup and recovery, we have uh, two uh, questions. How do you perform hard backup in our Akil database? It's very rarely in our previous interview questions also, I have given this thing. What is hard backup and what is cold backup? In this uh, question, we can directly answer. If you want to take a hard backup, your database needs to be put in maintenance mode, a begin backup mode, not the maintenance. If the backup mean alter table space begin backup. If you want to take a specific table space backup, you can use this command and take the table space backup. If you want to take complete database level backup, then you can put alter database begin backup. If you want to take complete database instead of table space, you can mention database. Okay, in this way, we are going to take hard backup. We are going to take the database backup in when the database is up and running online backup, but we need to use this command. Otherwise, the backup will not able to happen. But to take the backups manually, uh, copy the files in physical files, like how we are going to take the cold backup, where your uh, table spaces or data files are located in the physical server, there you can go to that location and take it by using copy command, copy to one location to one, another location. In that way, we are going to take the backup. So there is no much difference, cold backup and hard backup uh, in case of this one, taking the backups. But to do the backup activity in cold backup, we are going to shut down complete database. That is cold backup. Shutdown is required. But in hard backup, shutdown is not required. Only we need to put this one, alter database or table space, begin backup mode. Once you took the physical file copy and backup is done, then you can use end backup. Okay, alter table space, end backup, Al alter database, end backup. Next one, how we are going to uh, recover a database using Armin after uh, critical failure. Okay, if that, this is the most uh, like repeated question in interviews. They used to ask in different, different scenarios. So for this question, you can do this one. For restore and recovery purpose, that's where, right, Armin will help us online uh, backups and also it's very useful for the backup and recovery purpose. So by using this RMAN, we can easily restore and recover our databases in a shorter time, very shorter time. Okay, Re first of all, for this question, recover a database using RMAN, first we need to restore the database files from the valid backup. First, whatever the backup you have, you have to restore that. And then apply the increment backups if you have anything. Otherwise, you if you have a full backup, you can restore it. That is fine. Okay. And then apply the incremental backups. In this scenario, we can uh, check it here. See, my database backup is there last night, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. full backup is there. Today morning, 8 a.m., DB has been crashed. This database... 10, 8 a.m. DB has been crossed. So in between these 10 hours, like, okay, 10 to 8 a.m. In between these 10 hours, we have two incremental backups. Every five hours, we are going to take incremental backups in this database. So what we need to do, if you want to uh, recover this database, this if you want to recover this database, it is failed on 8 a.m., right? First of all, we need to take this full backup, whatever it is there till 10 p.m. that we need to restore. And then these two incremental backups, one could be around 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Another could be 7.50 or 7.80 or 7.30 a.m. Okay, these things we need to do it. So if you apply the incremental backups after restoring your complete uh, full backup, 
these incremental backups also we need to apply. And then from 7.50 to 8 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. in between these 10, 10 minutes or 30 minutes information, we can apply the redo logs, okay? Redo logs. These redo logs will help for, that's where we required a critical database restore and recovery purpose. Rest, uh, you can say recovery purpose. So apply the redo logs. Last 30 minutes uh, archives are redo logs. And then you can open your database in reset log mode. That concludes complete database restore. Complete database will be up and running with full information. Zero data loss in that scenario. So in this way, we are going to, we have to explain interviewer also ex expecting this kind of information. You can say uh, we can apply the full backup and then we can apply the archives and we start at the DB in reset log mode. They won't convince the way you are going to explain. If you took some example, okay, my backup is there in last 10 a.m., last 10 p.m., last night, and then my DB has been stopped. If sometime the interviewer itself, he will ask the scenario, he will explain the scenario. I have this backup at 10 p.m., full backup, and my DB is uh, uh, dropped or uh, I mean, some issue happened and database is uh, shut it down or corrupted at 8 a.m. How we are going to restore? In this way also, they used to ask. But the way of explanation and restore the process is this way. You need to do it. Full backup, incremental backups, redo logs and archive logs, then open reset log. That is complete process. Any kind of restore or recovery of this database. Okay. Next one is security. Security level, how you grant or revoke a privilege. It's important, right? Once we have created users in a database uh, without providing any uh, privileges, okay? Without providing any privileges, they cannot able to access it. By using grant command, we are going to provide the privilege. And uh, by using revoke, we are going to remove the privilege. Remove the, if any user is not required the select privilege and so on, so on object, the table, you can use revoke command and revoke the that object privilege, select privilege on the specific object. Okay. In this way, we are going to do that. And TDE is also one of the security one, uh, transport, uh, transparent data encryption. Data encryption will help you another layer of your security in your database. Okay, Whatever the sensitive data like columns, tables, entire database level, we can enable this TDA in any kind of column level, table space, or entire database level. We can enable it. If you enable this TDA, transparent data encryption, we can prevent the unauthorized access, unauthorized, only other data. Even though we are having database user access, we are providing grants and all, still some hackers, they are trying to access our database through the internet. Okay, even for that also extra precaution, extra security level, we need to enable the TDE. Others, the database is very, very, very secure place. No one can able to uh, access this database information. That's where TDE is very important. So this will encrypt the data in column level or table space level and the database level. It will provide the additional layer of the security. It will protect your data at rest and preventing the unauthorized access to sensitive information. If you are having your data is very crucial, right? For every business, their data is important for them. So as a DBA, we need to provide them extra security. So Oracle also providing this kind of tools to enable it and provide the extra security compared to other databases. Oracle is more secure, more user friendly and um, vast number of data you can able to access without compromising on the performance. So one of the security tool is TDE. They will ask you how to encrypt the data. So we have separate uh, session. We will take it how we are going to enable the TDE on our databases, 19C database. I'll show you that as. <clears throat> but this one is very important to understand what is TDE. It will provide the unauthorized access and data protection, extra level. That's it. And last topic is troubleshooting. Uh, how uh, we are going to diagnostics, resolving the locking uh, issues in our Oracle database. If any is lock is there, we can view how we can identify the locks in database. First of all, by using V dollar lock or V dollar session views, uh, combination of these two, 
we can able to uh, view the lockings and uh, to resolve the locking problems we have to check whether the commit either commit or rollback some some users are writing some queries big big queries half an hour 20 minutes 30 minutes they are trying to write the queries during they are accessing one object and they are doing some dml operations ddl and dml operations other users are trying to do the same kind of activity lock will happen on the table space so two people are trying to insert or update the table space same time the lock will be happen those who start the activity first that will allow that user to complete the transaction first once that user has initiated the commit or rollback until unless any one of that statement user has been initiated other user cannot do any kind of activities on this specific object those will generate the locks those will give the blocking sessions that's where we need to look into it and then we can connect with that users or uh, if the user is not active we can explain I mean release that logs then other users they can able to access that object they can perform their uh, activities so logs are happening due to the same objects same time uh, different users are trying to access or update delete inserts something will happen in that specific time that will be locked we have to check the logs and uh, by using these two views identify the session if it is active or inactive according to that if it is inactive then we can identify if it is an active even though who submitted that request we can connect with that users and then we can ask them how much time it may take if that user is committed or oh, it is not required you can uh, we can ask them to roll back it or uh, according to their activity if they are uh, ask us to kill that session we can do that with their permissions we cannot do any actions without the user uh, updates then what are the common causes of performance degradation? Lot of information. Mean, this question, right? Performance degrade will happen. Unnecessary question. I mean, how the queries has been designed. If the query is not properly designed, obviously the performance will be degraded. If you don't have a hardware, if you don't have a hardware sufficient resources, memory and hardware level, network level inputs, and the firewalls, required RPMs, uh, it, and other in software insufficient database design the sga memory parameters if you are not uh, planned properly and other parameter files if you are not properly planned obviously database will be degraded your performance in proper configuration software level hardware level database level all these three layers if anything is not configured as per the standards obviously that will cause the performance degradation another one is queries sql queries are not written properly if the queries doesn't have the proper indexing proper hints or proper way obviously that it will degrade the performance on the database side so so many ways so you can explain any one of the one or two scenarios and then they will okay for that how to optimize SQL queries for better performance? See here, this is the way we have to suggest them. It is good query, it is taking full table scan, the query is taking too long, it is not completed. These many things are these many queries. If you received, you can analyze the query execution plan. If it is good uh, plan, how I mean the execution plan or explain plans, you can take it. We can create the explain plans also. We can analyze the query execution plans by using this tool explain plan is a tool to create the execution plans to analyze the execution plans okay this will help us to uh, improve the performance optimization techniques these are all optimizing techniques okay indexing frequently queried columns if somebody is trying to access the column the column is huge then we can ask them to create indexing Select star. Some some of the users are developers. They used to use most of the same select star. It will fetch complete information on the tablet. Unnecessary, right? What exactly information they require, they have to use that information. Or count of one, they can mention instead of the star. Somebody use select count star from so on so on. Count star also, it will degrade your performance. What exactly, what columns you required, according to that, you can correlate. Mention the column names instead of the star. Okay, where class, use the where class or order by uh, some other uh, necessary things you can use it that will improve the performance. If you are not using anything properly, obviously the DB uh, performance will be degraded. 
we can ask them to create a hints, appropriate hints on that to improve the optimizer. Optimizer will generate the plan properly, Oracle optimizer. If that hints is not there properly, then obviously the performance will be degraded. The regular analyzing and rebuilding the indexes. So if anything table DML operations keep on happening on the tables, the index which is there in previously that may not able to fetch that properly. That's where whatever the frequently rebuilding the indexes that will improve your uh, performance as well. That is also one important thing. Okay, and also run gather the stats on a weekly basis. That is also improve your uh, performance. So these things properly designing the database schema and normalizing the data. In this way also we can able to improve the performance, optimize the SQL queries for better performance. These are all the few. We have few. so many options in there, but high level steps we can go ahead and improve the performance. Okay, deadlock is like, what is the deadlock and how we are going to release? Deadlock occurs, right? If two people are trying to, two or more people are trying to uh, do the some transactions, okay? In the same database, same object, obviously one can able to access if same time, same uh, user, I mean two different users, same time they submitted, obviously that will be blocked. So we need to wait for others to release the, uh, that information or blocking information. Otherwise, we need to, as a DBA, we need to check the blocking sessions and then identify which is going to, which ID is going to block which ID. SIDs and process IDs we can identify. And that based upon that SID, identify that SQL, which, who submitted that SQL, who is the owner of that one, identify that and then connect with them. We can able to resolve these deadlocks. Deadlocks will happen when two or more transactions are blocked each waiting for other to release a result. Simply when two or more transactions trying to access simple a particular object, uh, that objects, those uh, operations or transactions will block. Simply one, I mean we have, we have this window is there. Through this window, only two people can uh, go inside the, inside of this window at a time, two people, one and two. If four people are trying to uh, enter into this, uh, through this window, four people is trying to enter, obviously uh, two, three people has entered and it is going to hang it up. So no one will able to go to out, mean enter into that house or come out of this house. What they need to do it right, one by one, one, two, or else two users at a time and three, four users, second time they have to go. But Sometimes some hurry will be there. People are trying to uh, move fastly and they are going to stuck it in a, this much, this kind of uh, situations. Three people are trying to enter into the house at a time. Obviously these three people will blocked. And due to these three uh, people, uh, if you have another 10 people are there, they want to en uh, enter into this, uh, through this gate to that house. These remaining 10 people also in a, wait phase. They cannot do the transaction. Obviously, our database level blockage will be there. These three people are the blockers. And due to this, these 10 people are unable to perform their operations on this database. So we need to identify these three people and then find if any one of that uh, transaction or people is not active, then we can <clears throat> check the owner of this object or the person. We can ask them, do we have any urgency? Why, uh, why? Because we have another two uh, transactions also there at the same time. So if you could drop or if you could wait some time, once these two transactions completed, in mining, you can resubmit your request. It will complete immediately. Unnecessary, you are waiting last 10 minutes. We have to inform them in this way. Then the, once they will agree, we can kill this session. Okay, we can kill this session. Then these two people kill this session means this blocker. This blocker, we are going to kill it. Remaining two sessions will move on and those will be completed. Next, immediately we can ask them to submit the request again, submit the query again. Then we can avoid the blocking sessions, deadlocks that way. Deadlock will, I mean, automatically that will release generally. Even though if it is not releasing, we have to identify it manually and then we can uh, clear those deadlocks. To dissolve the deadlocks, Oracle automatically detects and resolve it's by rolling back one of the statements involving the same thing I explained here as well, right? 
So any one of the transaction are roll back are uh, removing this remaining things will move on. Otherwise, otherwise these three people, how they are going to, they entered and they stuck in this door, right? After some time they can manage it and they can uh, pass on to this door. Obviously they will move on, but it will take time. Generally it will take, uh, it will take one second or two seconds to pass this door. In this kind of deadlocks happen, they will take five minutes or in our case, we can take one minute. Instead of two seconds, they took one minute to enter to this house and do the perform, do their transactions, right? That is delay. Obviously, resource consumptions and uh, other resources are waiting to do their uh, transactions. It holds other operations as well. That's where those will complete automatically or else if it is taking more time, we can interrupt manually and then we can release one of that or we can ask them to roll back their transaction. Remaining transactions will move on. In this way, we are going to handle the deadlocks in the Oracle. Okay. Thank you, guys. If you need any specific interview questions or specific topics, commenting on this video so that I can take it and then I'll plan the session. Thank you. If you are not subscribed to my channel, go through this YouTube and search for Racks Infotech at the red Racks Infotech. Subscribe uh, this channel if it is useful for you. If it is useful, why? Because I'm going to share most of the Oracle DB knowledge still now. In the uh, future, I'm going to share the Rack videos and Apps DB videos and Cloud videos also. Exadate also, I'm going to plan to share the knowledge in this through this channel. We'll see one by one. I used to place it um, according to my time. I used to post those videos also. Also, going through these videos, you can subscribe it. You will get that alert. If you require any kind of support or other queries, if you want some clarification, comment on any kind of any one of that video or specific video. I'll take that comment and then I'll respond back. Okay. We used to provide the online trainings as well. If anyone is trying, planning to learn Oracle DBA, RAC DBA, RAMS DBA, comment in the comment or contact us at racksinfotech at gmail.com. Okay, racksinfotech at gmail.com. Racksinfotech at gmail.com. We will get back to you guys. Okay, I'll. So if it is in, useful for you or not, comment it back so that I can read that comments and I'll improve it according to your request. Thank you.